Hello friends, in this video, I'll be talking about how to set up the share storage using SCSI device and then we will be talking about setting the multipathing. Why do you need the share storage? If you want to set up pure scale, if you want to set up rack or if you want to set up the windows cluster or you want to set up the pacemaker cluster. So for so many reasons, you need a share storage and this particular tutorial will cover how to do that. So we need to install some of these packages. This particular package is for the multipathing and this is for the initiator, but I have installed all of these packages. You may not need all of this package, but there's no harm in not, not installing this package. So once these packages are installed, we need to start the SCSI service. So I have got these two hosts. The, this is the, this is DB1, if you see DB1, and then there is this box which is called DB2. So these are the two boxes. What I'll do is on this Windows server, I'll create a share storage, and this share storage I will mount on this box and this box. And actually, the commands are only four one, two, three, four. And then the next command is the normal file system command. So these are the only four commands that will allow you to sh sh uh, mount a share storage. And it is as simple as that. Let's do that. So this is to start the SCSI services. So let's do that. So this is to start this. This is to start the SCSI service. And once the if the server is rebooted, this particular command will make sure that SCSI service automatically starts even if the server is rebooted. Here also we will do the same two commands. So that's done. Now, once that is done, what we need to do is we need to go to Windows and we need to now create a, okay, so I don't have anything SCSI here, if you see. So what I need to do is I need to add a role called SCSI. Okay, so to do that, what I'll do, go do is I'll go here, add roles and feature. Let's repeat, I'll go to dashboard, add roles and feature, click on next, role based, click on next, click on next, and then under file and storage services here under file and SCSI services go here and click on this SCSI target the i SCSI target okay and then you have to say add features click next click next and i'm adding this and install and it's going to take some time so while it is doing this once this particular role is installed once this particular role is installed, we will be able to create SCSI share storage over here. So while this is happening, what I'll show you is like I have got another server. So I'll be doing this from Windows server. And if you if you can't, okay, I think it's going to finish faster. If you can't do it via Windows server, I'll be showing you via TrueNAS. So I have got something called TrueNAS. It's another virtual box. And if I open this, okay, Firefox. And if you see here, I got two IPs here. One is 0244 and 1.244. So same box has got two IPs. So using this particular box, I will show you how to uh, uh, how to set up the the multipathing. So same disk. What is multipathing? Multipathing is nothing but there are two paths for the same disk, and they are coming from the two network, two different networks. So it is the same disk. But same disk is being accessed by the Linux box using two different network path. And that is why it is called multipathing. So what I what will do is like I'll take this IP uh, 192.168.1.244. So HTTP 192. Yeah, that's the IP. And if I if this that's my true NAS and if I log in. You here I got storage. If you see my networks, so I got two networks. 192.168.0.244 and 1.244 and if i go to storage here i got one pool this 20 gb pool this pool this 20 gb pool is what i will be sharing using this kazi so i have set up already the portal and we will use this particular portal this particular portal to actually access this particular disk on our disk. So I'll be doing it in two different ways. One is using the true NAS or one using the Windows 2019. I guess it's still not done. So uh, let's wait. I'll pause the video till it is not done. Okay, so that's completed. So now what we'll do is we'll go to this file and storage services and you can see we ha I have something called SCSI. So click on that. 
Now to create a SCSI, so click on this and then, okay, I'll open Windows Explorer and as you can see under E drive, under E drive, I don't have anything here. So I'll select this E drive. I'll say browse E drive, select this and then I'll give shared the name name of the disk so click on next so okay so i think okay so let's not do that so click on next and i'll give the name so this is the shared disk so shared disk of 10 gb so i'll say so what it will do is under e drive it will create this vhdx file this disk file click on next and i'll say fix size i'll say 10 gb okay 10 gb click on next and then i'll say new scuzzy target so these are the target devices from where this particular share storage will be accessed so this particular if i if i show you here clear if config grep inet so this is 1.101 so let me take this and go to another box and do the same and this is 102 so i need to add this two as a target here to allow the windows server to access this linux server will be able to access this so let's click on next and let's say target say linux target okay or i'll say linux and click on next and add the target devices using IP address. So one is 101. So let me add that. And another one is 102. So let me add that. So that's done. Okay. Let me go back. Let's see. Let's I'll show you what I have done. So create a disk, then choose a path, browse in E drive, then next, the name of the disk. So let's say share 10 gig disk. Then next, give the size of 10 gig, click on next, then new SCSI target, click on next, give some name, so Linux, then next, add IP address, the first IP address is 101, and the second IP address is 102, add that, click on next, see here, okay, let me do this, okay. So see here, I don't have anything. So leave this. Next, the, sh the shared 10 G disk. So that will be the name of the disk. The target is Linux and it will be accessible from 1.101 and 102. These are my Linux IPs. And say create. And if you see, I have got this 10 G disk that appeared as soon as clicked next. Now, once that is done, so we what we have done here is we have created and it's good it's initiating so because i said fixed storage so it's going to initiate that 10 gb disk for me so this 10 gb it is initiating this 10 g disk so if you see the size or if i click on properties you'll see that it's a 10 gig disk 10 gig disk this particular disk it's initiating now this is a share storage the scuzzy drive which we will be mounting on our on our windows uh, sorry linux servers so let's go here and let me show you here i got only these three disks and we will be trying to add the fourth disk of 10 gb here so first thing that we need to do is once these two services started now we just have to discover so so this is the ip address of my windows server so let me show it to you so go to command prompt and if i say ip conf fake you will see that the ip is 1.19 what i'm saying is discover the discover the devices from portal 119 so this is my portal windows server and discover the scuzzy devices coming from here so let's take this and fire this command here and you can see this is the scuzzy device name that is coming and linux target we i gave the name linux target so this is coming from and now we'll take this name we'll take this name 
and put it here okay so now what i'm saying i'll take this particular command so i have in in this command i have just discovered it okay so now i will be creating a session i will be logging into this particular target so before doing that what i'll do is i'll show you okay i'll open one more terminal and ls minus l dev slash sd star if you see i have got two disks a and b and or i can i can also do f disk minus l grep sd you can see i got the disk sdb and disk sda these are the two disk and i don't have any i don't have any third disk so now what i'll do is using this particular command i will be logging into that portal so from where i got this this information from the discovery this is the output and then i'm saying into this portal so now if i do this the successful and if i run this particular command now you see i got one more disk called dev sd which was not here we here we had only two disks now i got this third disk dev sd or if i run this particular command then you will see that i had only dev sda and dev sdb now i got dev sdc so this is the raw partition so this is the raw i have not created any partition so what we will do now is we will so this is done so we discovered it we logged in so this is done and now this is the amount of storage and this is this is same these steps are same like you know these are not different uh, these steps are pretty same which you will do across all the uh, all the servers uh, it's, it's like formatting a disk and then creating a file system so let's do that so let me clear the screen so first thing that we need to do is f disk and take this name and then click say new primary partition one enter enter and w let me repeat it for you so take the name of the disk that you want to create a partition on take the name of the disk click on new click on p for primary partition click on one for the first partition then default will be one so enter and last cylinder default enter and then finally w to write and once that is done if i run the same command now you see for dev sdc i got a partition or if i run this if here you see there is no partition so if i run the above command you see i got this particular partition now the partition has been created so what we will do now is we will create a file system file system and till now it is file system is not there so we'll create a file system so let's do that so to create the file system what we need to do is we need to uh, make fs dot ext4 and the partition name sdc1 the partition name so that's done okay so we have created the partition now still we don't have that so what we will do now the partition has been created so now that particular file system is been uh, is been formatted with ext4 file system the next thing that we will do is we will give a label to it so what label you want to give so we will give so data c so we will uh, okay so let's give a label so it's your choice so let's say i want to give this this particular disk this is the new disk and i want to give the label let's say disk c let's do that right now what i'll do this is the label disk c not now what i'll do is like i'll say make dir disk c so disk c so now what i'm doing is like i will be mounting this particular file system onto this particular mount point so this is the my mount point so to do that i need to insert an entry so if i show you my fs tab i have only this dev sdb1 i don't have sdc so i need to add that so let me do that so what was the name 
so label was disk C and the mount point is also disk C so I'm entering this entry I'm pushing this entry over here in my and if I show you my cat etc so this is the new so this is the label and this is the mount point and now final command that we need to run is mount disk C and once that is done if you come here you see dev sdc1 is mounted under disk c and if i show you df minus h you can see that i got this dev sdc1 which is mounted with this mount point with 9.8 and this is my shared storage and from where this storage is coming this stash storage is coming from this particular windows server so now what we need to do so we have successfully mounted this, this particular disk onto our box one so what we will also be doing is we will be doing the same thing on node two so no let's go to node two and we have started the service so the steps now are we don't have to do here what we don't have to do we don't have to format the disk because we have already done we don't have to create a file system but we will have to create the label and we have to put that entry into our etc fs tab but we don't have to do these two steps so we don't have to do this but we will have to do these steps so what we will do okay so now what we'll do is we have to now first discover the same story we have to discover this disk which is coming from our windows server so let's do that so what i'll do i'll clear this is the next box and if i show you here df minus h i don't have the disk c i don't have that 10 gb mount point so let me clear this uh, okay no problem so let me discover the portal so this is the portal i'll take this name and then what i'll do is i'll take the next command okay before doing that i'll just show you that ls minus l slash dev slash sd star i don't have sdc disk so now let me let me take this enter it i'm logging in okay it's taking time should not take time okay 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 for some reason it was hanging so i just killed that session and then i was able to log in again and if i do now this i can see and if you see i don't have to format the disk dev sdc because that disk was formatted here so automatically the formatted disk the partition disk the file system it came so we don't have to do these two steps what i can do is i'll just create the label and then i will add the entry into etc fs tab and then i will make that directory and finally mount this i'll run this all command together so let's do that let me clear it so first okay let's let me repeat the commands the first command is giving the label to this particular mount point the second is checking if that particular entry is there in the fs tab if not and we'll put that entry once we put that entry we'll read the fs tab file again we will make this directory the mount point and we will mount that particular disk so that's what we will do so I'm doing it all together and if I if I do this mount okay so previously in the FS tab I did not have that entry I added that particular entry I read that particular file again now I got this particular entry and I made the directory the mount point and then finally I mount it and if I now show you df minus h you can see that I got this disk c coming from 9.8 and it is showing multipath but ignore it okay so this particular this is the shared disk the disk this is a 9.8 gb disk if you see 9.8 23 9.2 9.8 23 it is now present on db2 and it is present on db1 and from where it is coming it is coming from this windows box so we were able to 
share create a SCSI drive so we created a SCSI disk here and we expose that SCSI disk on our two Linux server DB1 and DB2 so this is one way what I also told you that I can I, I have this if you don't want to use Windows you can use this TrueNAS box so I have got this TrueNAS this is the okay this is the this is the uh, portal SCSI portal which I got and this is the disk and this particular net if I show you in the network I got these two IPs so what I will do now is I will use this 20 GB disk this 20 gig disk I'll use this 20 gig disk if you see this is a 20 gig disk so available formatted and all that stuff this is a 20 GB disk I will use this disk so I got these two disks 20 GB 20 GB disk so I'll use this one of these 20 GB disk to sh using this SCSI portal, this particular portal, using these two network IPs, using these two network IPs, I will be exposing or mounting this particular share storage on here and on here. So I'll not do it on both nodes. I'll just do it on one node. So let me let me switch off this particular machine. So I don't need this machine. So let me power off this machine. So I'll just set up the multipathing. So okay so what we need to do is to set up the multipathing what I'll do now so this particular 9.8 GB disk this is coming from Windows 2019 that's still there I have not set down so this particular disk is still there and if I go to this particular disk this mount point I can create folder and all that stuff so if I say CD slash disk C and LS minus L and if I say create make directory test Sorry, I should have said test and ls minus l. So this is and if I, I can create a file touch one and cat one, absolutely nothing is there. And echo test file to one. And if I say cat one, you see the test file. So this is the file ls minus l. So this is the file. And this all of this, this particular disk is from this Windows box. So what we will do the same thing but what we will be doing is now we'll be share, setting up this SCSI on our TrueNAS so from here so these are the two IPs and I'll not this is like how to do this uh, just install the TrueNAS and once you install the TrueNAS go to share uh, go to sharing and under sharing you use the visa to create all of this so it's pretty self-explanatory uh, not not much to explain here. So what what I what I'll do now is I'll go to my Linux box Clear this and as of now I got this 10 GB disk So now what we'll be doing is we will be getting another 20 GB disk from this one and this particular disk We will be using the multipathing. We will be setting the multipathing. So this is the IP address of my TrueNAS and this is also my IP address of my TrueNAS. So let's do that. So let's do here. So I got this. So take a note of this and this is what we'll be passing in the next command. So let's take this and put it here. Okay, and let's do this. So before doing that, I just want to show you ls minus l dev slash sd star. So I got this is the these are the previous disk. C is coming. This is coming from Windows Server. And now I will be adding one more disk coming from the TrueNAS. Uh, uh, and I can show it to here also. Okay. So I got. B A this is 8 80 GB disk this is 8 GB disk this is 10 GB disk and now I will be accessing a, the disk from FreeNAS so that's done successful and if I show you the output of this command you can see now I got this disk SDD which was not there and if I show you here then you can see dev SDC which is a 20 GB disk and again there is no partition on this particular disk so we have logged into that particular disk so that's done but as I said I want to set up the multipathing with this so what what we'll be doing is like you we will scan the same box same so this is my true NAS so that there are two IPs so I'll be scanning the same again and I can see it actually comes up comes back with the same 
if you see this so if I control F and control V and if I do this and do this so it's coming back with the same but now if you see previously I logged into 1.244 so let me put this color coding and now I am logging to 0.244 so I'm saying log this IQN this SCSI drive to this particular portal log into that so let me do that Yeah, and if I do this commands again, you see I got this SDD and SDDE1. These are the two disks now. It appears that they, those are two disks coming. So they have two, but actually in the true NAS, it's the same disk. And if you see, I can every time I'm connecting, it is giving me some information here. So I now portals, uh, okay, authorized access, nothing, targets. So now associate targets yeah nothing nothing I can see here anyway so what I'll do now these are the two disks but actually they, those are the same disks because I use the same name o only thing is like this is coming from this is coming from the one IP and this is coming from different IP and both the IPs are associated with my TrueNAS box now what I'll do is to will go with multipathing so to do that we will first enable the multipath conf that's done and let's see if we have any multipath devices so using the ll command we can see if there are we have any okay we don't have any multipath devices so that ll command or you can also use l so this will say if we have any multipath devices what now what we'll do we will just use this command multipath so this is as simple as that this is the one command so we'll just use this and once you press enter you see it identified that there is a 20 gb disk coming from TrueNAS, and it actually created this empath d now if i do this here okay you see empath d this is the disk 21.5 GB and if I do this this so these two disks it created as a empath disk okay and now what we will be doing is we can format this and mount this particular disk so let's just give me a minute so now what we will be doing is we will be using this particular name the empath disk name to format this particular disk so let's say F disk the steps are pretty similar so let's say new primary partition partition one enter enter and w so that's done so now if i show you f disk minus l grab so i got this partition previously if i if i show you this particular command i only used to get this information and now i got this particular partition the first partition of 20 gb so now what we will do is on this particular partition we will create the file system make fs dot ext4 then we will say we'll give this enter uh, okay so what we'll be doing is we'll be creating the partition on this empath disk so we'll use this particular command make file system so what we did previously is we created we did the partition so f disk minus l grab empath so we just created the partition on this particular disk so we will be taking this particular disk and we will be creating the partition and if I press enter, so it's going to create a partition for me. The ext4, the file system is of type ext4. That's what we are going to do. Once that is done, what we need to do is we need to create a label. So again, the same steps. So this time. okay and we'll give the label as empathy 
anything we it's your choice and then what we'll do is like we'll create this particular disk and then we will enter this particular information into our etc fs tab so let me g edit and take this here so let me format this to look pretty and let's format this to look pretty and now what we are saying this is the label the label that we gave was mpart d and this is the mount point we created a directory called mpart d and i'm going to now save this particular file and before doing that i'll just show you that i don't have that 20 gb disk and our final step is mount mpath d and once that is done it should appear here and you see that mpath d of 20 gb that appeared in my file system and if i now show you mpath minus ll sorry uh, not mpath multipath minus l this command which was not showing any output you will see that we got one disk of 20 gb so coming from Truna. So, so what we did is the commands were actually very simple. We not in this case, all that we did is we discovered the same SCSI drive using two different portals, uh, two different network addresses. It's the same drives coming from the same disk. Once that is done, I enabled my multipath conf. Then I try to list the devices nothing was there then i only command that i fired was multipath and then automatically when i fired that command if you see only one command multipath it created this multipath disk once that disk was created the thing first i did is i f disk it i've created a partition once the partition was created then i did a make fs the i created the file system once the file system was done i gave the label i gave the label and then once the label was done i created the directory and mounted that particular file system so these are the these are the ways you can create your scuzzy drive using if you want you you can do it via trunas if you want to do it via windows server you can do it via windows server i just wanted to say once again this 10 gb disk is coming from windows server this 20 gb disk which is a multi-part disk coming from a trunas server so the i have got now two different servers storing my so i can think these are, are my storage boxes or this is my storage box and this is my client which is accessing that storage and i was able to show you how to do that using trunas and how to do that using windows choice is yours you want to use windows server you can use windows server this is a 2019 data center evaluation version that uh, it is valid for 190 days i believe or 137 160 days i, I don't remember exactly so you can use windows server or you can you don't have to use windows 2019 you can use windows 2012 you can use windows 2016 you can use windows 2019 you can also use windows 2008 but you have to install the scuzzy software uh, uh, manually you have to download this scuzzy software from microsoft website but in windows 2012 six windows 2016 and windows 2019 that's scuzzy it's a role that you have to enable so we went here and we enabled that particular role and from here we enabled that particular role scuzzy role and once that role is enabled you can create the scuzzy drive which we did from this file and storage uh, section so we did from file and storage so we can use this particular mechanism or the true nas if you want to use the true nas you can use the true nas the true nas gives you this gui and from the gui you can manage your storage and all that stuff so i have a storage box of true nas or i have a storage box of windows and the disk the 10 gb disk is been accessed on my linux server and also the 20 gb disk coming from my true nas is being accessed from my linux server so the steps are actually very simple if you see this document this is not even two pages document it's just one page document which i will put it in the description the link to this particular doc, uh, document i'll put it into the description of my this particular video so that you can use this particular document i hope this particular tutorial was useful 
Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.